get started. I'm really excited that you guys are here today. Uh, don't forget to mute your uh, computer uh, for not saying anything. Uh, but really excited uh, that you guys are here. Um, you could be doing anything on a Saturday, but you're here to learn something new, and I appreciate your time, your courage to do so. So, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I was fan playing one of my favorite genres of music, which is uh, 70s old school. It's kind of a tie mixed up between like 90s hip hop and R&B and uh, 70s old school, but I think I would have to go with 70s if I had to pick one because uh, a lot of that stuff from the 90s was sampled from the 70s. So. That was my reason for that picking of a song. And also because it's September and September is my birthday month. So I'm excited about that. All right. And welcome Ananda to the chat and to the WordPress 101 class and good to have you here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, what are we actually gonna learn today? Well, we're actually gonna learn what is WordPress. This is a one-on-one -on -one class. So we're gonna start from the beginning uh, we're going to actually set up your account today, which is exciting. And then we're going to prepare for how to create your awesome website in the future. And Ananda is from Vicksburg. Is that Mississippi or Missouri? I can't remember which one MS is. You guys help me out. Mississippi. There we go. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. So this is what we're going to learn today. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be informative. And remember, this is a three-part series. So it's progressive. They build one upon the other. So uh, at the end, you will definitely get a cool certificate if you attend all three classes. Now, remember, if you come to part one, but you don't come to part two, then part three may be a little confusing because you probably missed some steps. So I would highly encourage you to attend all three parts, not so that you can get your cool, just so that you can get your cool certificate, but also so that you can um, learn as much as you can and so that it will all kind of make sense to you as we piece all this stuff together. Welcome, Rochelle. Good to see you. All right. And then, of course, you probably want to know a little bit about who's teaching you. I'm Chanel. Some of you guys already know this backstory, but we'll just go through it one more time. So for me, I'm Chanel. I've always been very creative uh, since a kid. Drawing, painting, Legos, chemistry sets, cooking, anything that just has to do with making stuff, I'm doing it. And I just loved just doing those things 24 seven, maybe because I was the only child, I don't know. But as I got older, uh, there was a subjects that I were good at, but they just really didn't interest me as much as being creative and making things. But I didn't know uh, what kind of career I could get into where I could actually like survive and make money off of just making art. So when I discovered graphic design, I was really excited. That was 11th grade in high school. And from there, I just took it and ran with it uh, because it basically kind of combines the technical and creative side and uh, helps you to visual problem solve for all different kinds of people. So from there, I went on and I studied at a couple of schools for design, Ohio State and SCAD Atlanta, uh, graphic design and interactive design there. And then I've also had a span of a 15 plus year career where I've had the opportunity to work for really cool companies and brands, uh, Fortune 500, nonprofits, my own business experiences, and just all kinds of meaning, all kinds of cool people along the way uh, with design. So now we're here, 2020, and I'm here now to hopefully give all the experience that I've learned and share that with you because design has afforded me so many different opportunities uh, to meet so many different people, work on different things and in different industries. And so now I wanna give that back to you guys. And I do that uh, by just helping you to enhance the work that you do through learning graphic design, I teach uh, beginner content, and I try to make everything simple, fun, and easy. I think that right now we're obviously living in an information age where if you can be in the digital space and you can understand how that works, then you can still kind of thrive because that's where everything is right now. It's in the digital world. And so learning things like design and WordPress are really beneficial to help you do that. And so I want to keep everything fun. I want to keep everything interactive. So please, at any time, please feel free to ask a question in the chat box. I'll also pause along the way to see if you have any questions. You can feel free to uh, raise your hand and say it uh, through the microphone, or you can type it if you don't wanna say it out loud, but either way, we'll make sure that we try to get all your questions answers. And I just like a lot of feedback because I wanna keep it fun. I don't want it to just be a monologue, me talking at you. 
So I might just ask you a couple of times, like, you got it? And just tell me, hey, I got it. Just type in the chat or say it out loud. So you guys got it? Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Watching the chat box. All right. I like this. Good. I love interactivity. All right. So WordPress. I want to show you guys some cool sites that are made from WordPress. And I'll just show you a few because there's so many different websites. But a lot of these websites that you see every day, they are WordPress sites. So TechCrunch, MTV News, Sony Music, the Walt Disney Company. You can look these things up and see how these websites work. Mercedes-Benz, the PlayStation blog. I love PlayStation. The Star Wars blog. And yes, even Beyonce uses WordPress. So you know it must be serious if Beyonce is using it. So it's, it's really awesome. And the really great thing is that you also will be able to create a cool website once the series is over with. So I want you to get excited about that because you will be able to create something similar and hopefully it'll be an enjoyable experience for you. So that's what we're gonna do. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, we kind of just need to understand what WordPress is and how to use it. So exactly what is WordPress? Well, it's a free and open source content management system written in PHP and paired with a MySQL database. Okay, translation is actually, and we're gonna let somebody else in here. What's up, Anaya? Translation is, it's actually a free website platform that was developed by a community of developers like all across the world. And so this source code is freely available for anybody to use. And basically it's created with a programming language called PHP. There's different like, types of languages all across coding world that you can use with the WordPress uses PHP. And it stores all your data in a complex spreadsheet, which we call MySQL. And all of this technology is wrapped up into a very easy to use kind of template system and interface. So there are other kind of uh, content management systems out there you may have heard of, uh, Squarespace or Wix or Drupal or Joomla and stuff like that. Uh, but WordPress is probably one of the most popular platforms in the world for creating uh, websites. So this is a very good tool to use. All right, so a little history about WordPress. It actually started off as a blog website in 2003. So a blog is another word for like a web blog or like a basically a personal journal or diary. So basically it was just for blogging in 2003. But then as it grew and the community kind of progressed and these developers were creating uh, different uh, codes to build this up, it progressed into making full websites. So now you can make almost any kind of website with WordPress. And we're actually at version, I believe, 5.5 right now. And on top of that, uh, you can also use WordPress to actually create web apps or software or programs. So if you think about like the apps that are on your phone that you get from like the App Store or the Google Play Store uh, that you have to download to your phone, well, a web app actually doesn't need to be downloaded from an App Store. It can just be native to the internet, but you can actually create apps through the internet with WordPress. So that's actually pretty cool too. So it does a lot of things since it started from 2003 until now. And I personally wish that WordPress was around when I made my first website. Uh, when I first came to Atlanta uh, for my first job, I'm actually originally from Maryland, uh, I had to make a portfolio website. And so I made it from scratch with little knowledge really of how to do websites at the time, because this was earlier, closer to when WordPress was started. And uh, I made it with something called Macromedia Dreamweaver. Uh, I tried my best, uh, but it actually was pretty bad. It was terrible. Uh, it didn't work at all. It was broken links. So I had to start all over again, but somehow I made it through. I was able to create my portfolio website, land a job, and move to Atlanta. But if I had WordPress, I'm pretty sure it would have been a little bit easier. Um, but at that time, WordPress wasn't uh, as, as robust as it is now, but if it was, that would have been a great help to me. But it's all good. It's neither here nor there. I made it. Cool. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Just give me a yes or a guide in the chat box, just to make sure you're still awake. Good, all right, cool. Now, we're learning about WordPress, but I kinda wanna give you just a little bit more of a backstory, just so that you really understand how websites work. And I wanna give you a disclaimer. I am not an IT person, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer, 
but I have made and created many WordPress sites and worked on many. So I know a little something, but just to let you know, this is a brief history lesson coming from a non-IT person. So disclaimer. So bear with me. I'm going to do my very best. All right. Ready? Let's go. So how a website's website works simplified. So a website is pretty much made up of all these cool different kind of content elements. We've got images, we've got text, we've got buttons, we've got music, videos, all kinds of stuff. All these things make up the websites that you see today. Well, how are these elements actually made? Somebody actually has to program these elements and code them. So what's up, son? Welcome to the, to the class. Um, so basically, someone has to use these code to make these elements that show up on our website. And the basis of most websites are, are made with HTML code, but they also are made with other forms of code to combine with the HTML to create these really cool kind of content pieces that we see that live on the website. And basically, all this code is created in these different files. So basically, a website is a whole bunch of different files of code that make up this website. Well, if anyone's ever seen code before, like it's just a whole bunch of numbers and letters and symbols, and it can be kind of scary if you're not a programmer or a developer. So it's like, how do we translate this code that people are writing to create these cool elements into something that we see such as a website? Well, that's what the web browser is for. The web browser is a software installed on your computer. It can be Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, Internet Explorer. And the software and the web browser actually helps you to not only browse the web, but also it translates that code that was made to create all those cool website elements into a way that you can actually view them. So it encodes them in a way that you can actually see those elements made from that code. And if you think about it, like you can kind of relate it to like humans have their own human uh, unique DNA that make up, you know, th that individual. And so the website has its own unique DNA the code that makes up that site. So now that we have all these files of this code, and we have this browser that can encode it, where do these files actually live from the website that I just made, from the code that I just made? Well, they live on the web server. And the web server is literally just powerful supercomputers that hold all the files that make up all the websites of the world. So they're actually little, literal supercomputers. They're flat, kind of like this illustration right here. They don't have a screen, they don't have a mouse, they don't have a keyboard. They just hold a whole bunch of data and they process things really, really fast. They're really strong computers. And that's the reason why they're flat like that, so you can stack them on top of each other because we need a lot of web servers to hold all these files that hold all these websites. So the web server is what holds all our files and it does exactly what it says, it serves you the data. All right, so now the question is, how do we actually get to the files that we want for a certain particular website. Well, we need to go back to the web browser, type in the URL www.amazon.com, and it will take you to that server that houses that actual website. So you type in enter and behind the scenes, what happens is it, that signal goes through the internet and it goes to the web browser and it looks for where are the files that are associated with this website. And basically what it uses is a DNS, a domain name system. So basically think of like a huge internet phone book where it's looking up the website that you're looking for and connecting it to that particular website. So it uses that DNS to find the domain name that you typed in and when it finds it, it pulls up those files and voila, it displays the website. So in essence, that's how websites work. Does that make sense to anybody? Let me know. Kevin's got it. Yes. Okay, I did it. All right. Whew, I was a little nervous about that because that is not my area of expertise. But if you do have more questions, uh, feel free to ask them. But I would highly suggest that you ask Google because Google will tell you everything you need to know. So that's just my two cents on that. But I can answer any questions if you do have any right now. Let me know. And if you don't, we'll move on. I'll just pause for a second, just in case you do. Also, I want to pause too, because Sun is in the uh, class and I want to give, and everyone else gives Sun 
additional round of applause because I do believe that Sun has actually attended all the classes of the summer design series since we started uh, in July, I believe. So do the round of applause for Sun or click your emoji clap because I think that's awesome. I appreciate your attendance. Thank you, Sun, for being here. All right. So now that we know how websites work, thank you, Kitopia, for that clap. Cool. Now that we know how websites work, we need to actually know what makes a good website. Can anybody here tell me, uh, either in the chat or uh, on your microphone, what you think actually is the formula for a good website? Like, what are some of the elements that we need to make a good website? You can just throw anything out there. Any, any ideas? No wrong answers. User friendly. All right. That's what Ketopia says. That's correct. What else? Content. Yeah, you definitely need something to put on the website for sure. Easy to navigate. Rochelle. Thank you. That's right. What else? Appealing design. Very important. Good typography. Yes. These, that's my roadhouse right there. What else do we need? Cohesive branding. Ooh, all right. She's preaching right there. All right. What else? Is that about it? All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think uh, a website needs. Con contact info. Yeah, that would actually be good to know. Like, how do I get in contact with you if I'm interested in your services or want to purchase something? Very good. Cool. Well, to me, I think there's three things, three kind of areas that you need to make a good website. The first is web design, and this is loaded in itself. So web design is kind of encompassing all of these things that help make a design uh, look what look right, look appealing, and work well. So first you need graphic design, which is basically kind of the combination of the images, the layout, the typography, the design, um, the spacing, things like that that actually make it appealing to the eye. So that's very important to be able to know how to do that. Uh, then we have, as someone said, it has to be user friendly. So we need to have a good user experience where people understand where they need to click. They can kind of understand the journey that the website takes them through. Uh, they know what happens. They have a good feedback. When they click something, they know something's supposed to happen. Those things are very important. Even styling, that goes more, kind of, kind of pairs with graphic design a little bit. Basically, it's basically how the website styled through color, through fonts, uh, through spacing, padding, margins, things like that. Styling is very important to kind of help us get those little details correct. Of course, we need content, so we need some type of copy, some website copy, some text that we can put in there. And then SEO, we need to be able to optimize this websites so that can be searched easily on any of these browsers and we can find it in Google uh, and make sure that that website is visible to everybody. So web design is like one area. Then the other area is web development. So this is like more of the back end stuff that actually will allow the website to, to work. So we need to have the code that actually is the building blocks that puts all these files and website, the website elements together. We need to have the web server. Remember that's where the actual website is located. That's where it's hosted. That's the address or that's the actual home where the uh, website files live. Then we have the network security. So we wanna make sure that our site is secure, that we don't get hacked or anything like that. And then of course, like e-commerce, like if you wanna buy something from this website, all those things kind of have to be developed and coded in a way where it's a safe experience, it's an experience that makes sense, it's fluid, and someone can purchase something from you. So those are two very important aspects. But this is the most underrated aspect that I feel some people might forget, but it's very, very important. You definitely need the five P's, and that's planning, patience, perseverance, problem solving, and lots of practice. Now, if any of you have ever worked on a website in any form, you know I'm preaching right now because websites are not for the faint of heart. Uh, even though they have been made to be uh, a little easier to work on and develop, you still need to have these things in order to have a good website. If you're not on the end of someone who's making it, uh, but you want to uh, get someone else to kind of help you make one, you still need to have a good plan so that you can give them the plan so that they can make the website for you. 
you definitely need patience because web development is one of those things where you just have bugs, something doesn't work, you don't know why, and you're just trying to rack your brain and figure it out. Uh, so you do have to be, have patience and perseverance to get through that. You have to be willing to solve problems. So uh, figuring out why something doesn't work or why something didn't move exactly where you wanted it to move to. And you just have to keep practicing, just like anything else. Graphic design, web design, cooking, sewing, whatever it is that you want to do, you have to practice in order to get good at it. So these are the three areas that I believe make a good website. Now what WordPress does is it basically kind of takes those areas that I just showed you and kind of simplifies it down into one platform where it's a little easier for you to do these things because it's already kind of boxed up for you. Now you're still gonna need practice and perseverance and patience, but maybe you don't need as much because WordPress has done a lot of the work for you, which is very cool. And it allows you, the user, to actually focus on the things that are important to you, like actually creating the website idea and goals, trying to figure out what type of content you want to create for the website, and just executing it and maintaining it. So instead of you having to go through code and type in stuff, unless you want to be a coder or a programmer, um, but most of us kind of just want to bypass that part and just get to the fun part, um, then we can do that. And Keytopia says, I'm speaking nothing but the truth. <laughs> you spelled one word and took you 30 minutes to find that mistake. Yes, if, and programming is very precise. So if you are using a language uh, that requires a certain type of command or word, if you don't type that word exactly the way it's supposed to, then that code will break or it won't work and you'll be trying to figure out why it doesn't work. And so those are the type of things, sometimes we call them headaches, sometimes we call them fun challenges. It depends on how you look at it. Those are the type of things that you may or may not want to uh, deal with. So WordPress kind of helps you kind of bypass some of that stuff. Is that making sense to everybody so far? You guys got it? 100% all right. You guys are going to be typing got it so many times a day before you leave. Thank you so much. I appreciate the feedback. So again, what is WordPress? Well, we kind of know, but we kind of need to know a little bit more before we make our own WordPress site. So what is actually WordPress comprised of? Well, if you look at it from the back end, let's kind of break it down so we just really understand what's happening back there. So like I said before, WordPress is built with these code, the building blocks of code called PHP, and the database aspect of that is called MySQL, which is basically like a really kind of complex spreadsheet that holds all your content and it can uh, feed you that content whenever you request it. Like you said, let's say you, you want to pull someone's name or you want to put something into a contact form. Those type of things are stored in the MySQL database. So that's the foundation, that's the code base. Then we have what we call themes. So my WordPress is a templated system. So basically, it comes with a lot of pre-made templates that you don't have to worry about creating the design from scratch. You can already use the templates that they have. And we call these themes. Now there are free ones, which you can uh, get from wordpress.com. Uh, there are paid ones, which remember there are developers all across the world who are creating these different uh, WordPress themes for you and building up this WordPress community. So you can go buy a really nice theme if you want that has what you want in it and pay for it. Or you can even create a custom theme if you're that type of person who wants to kind of get down and dirty and do a little bit more programming or get a little bit more complex, you can use a custom theme. But either way, you can find some type of template that can help you make your website experience a little faster. Now on top of that, they have what we call plugins, which are basically like add-ons to add things onto that theme that may not be existent. So for example, if you found a really cool theme, uh, but you wanted to have like a calendar uh, kind, of, kind of functionality in there, you can find a calendar plugin online. You can find, there's, they have lots of free plugins, but they also have paid ones. You just have to figure out which one you need. Um, and you can basically install that plugin into your theme and they'll kind of add it on there. And now you can have a calendar in your, in your website. So this is called the template system. And basically it's just comprised of the themes and the plugins. And then the last aspect of this is what we call short codes. So basically this is just like kind of little snippets of code that you can insert within your different pages to have a certain functionality pop up. So for example, our, our calendar, maybe we want our calendar to live on our scheduling page of our website. So how do we get the calendar to actually appear? We have a little short code that we type in 
and maybe we want it to be in the middle of the page. So we insert that short, short code in the middle of the page and now that calendar where it will appear. So a lot of times short codes, codes are associated with the plugin and it's a way for you to actually kind of insert that uh, code into uh, the page so that that plugin will activate and you can see that functionality. So that's our kind of back end and all this stuff combines to create our content management system. This is what's managing all of our content in a very easy templated way. Now, what about the front end? What does it look like when we actually see WordPress on the front? Well, remember WordPress is using a whole bunch of content blocks. So pictures, images, graphics, uh, text blocks, buttons, menus, logos, things like that. All these things are being laid out um, and through content blocks. And you can actually use WordPress to drag and drop these things, elements across the page where you want them to go. So instead of, like we say, creating that code from scratch, they've already got these things kind of made for you. You just need to know how to rearrange those on the page. So WordPress uses content blocks and basically you can start with an original theme, which is either free or paid. And basically when you get it, it's gonna have uh, not your information in it, but it's just gonna kind of have the kind of fake dummy text information in it until you put your own information into it. So usually it's gonna have their logo in there, some placeholder photos, probably some really nice stock photography. Um, it's gonna have some dummy text um, and whatever pages that come with the theme. Uh, but it's up to you to customize that theme and make it your own. So you can customize that by adding your own logo, your own photos, your own text, things like that. Um, and depending on how complex or how far you wanna take it so it doesn't look as so much like the original theme, you may uh, customize it more. Now the issue I kind of see where it kind of gets a little tricky is uh, when you want to, your theme to look like, your website to look like a theme, but you don't have as much information to fill in that website. So for example, uh, if you wanted to have a restaurant website and you found a really cool restaurant theme for your res restaurant, but you only had one good image and you had like two paragraphs of text, but this theme comes with like 10 pages, then you're gonna have a little trouble filling up that website because you don't really have that much information to make it look like how the theme does. So, and with the theme, the cool thing is that you don't have to use all the pages that come with it. You can just pick and choose what you want. And you can also change out the theme if you get tired of it or if you don't wanna use it anymore. You can always change your theme to something else and all your content that you've entered will still be there. So that's the cool thing. But you just kinda of have to think, keep these things in mind when you're actually planning out your website because uh, if you don't have a lot of content yet or you don't plan on making a lot of content, then you should probably try to find a theme that matches the level that you're trying to go to. Or if you're trying to go further and you think your business is gonna grow or your website's gonna grow, try to find a theme that can grow with you that's more robust, that has the types of functionality that you're looking for. Or maybe you can find some plugins to add on to that. Uh, but just really depends on what you're building and how complex it is. And then finally, you can build your own theme. So if you wanna get down and dirty, you don't like what's out there, or you just wanna kind of uh, be that person that kind of customizes things yourself, you can actually take those blocks and create your own layout. And what you can use is these things called website builders. So you may have heard of some of these website builders. Uh, there's Visual Composer, there's WP Bakery, there's uh, Divi Builder, all different kinds of things, but basically, They've already got these pre-made blocks made, but they're empty, there's nothing in them. And basically it's up to you to lay these blocks out, content blocks out, images, text, buttons, whatever that may be, um, onto the page the way that you like it. And you kind of create your own templates and your own theme to work from. So that's the more complex use of WordPress. If you really want to go down that route, you can go that way. But if you want to keep it simplified, you can kind of use a theme from out of the box, just replace the words and the, and the images, and you're good to go. So it really just depends on how far you want to go with it. It's up to you. Cool. Now WordPress it sounds like really good so far, um, but there are some benefits and there are some potential issues that you just want to make sure you are aware of. Now WordPress, the benefits are, of course, that there's not really that much coding experience needed. It's really user friendly. So if you don't really want to mess with the code and stuff like that, then you've got this easy drag and drop template system that you can use to create your website. Like I said before, it's universally known. So people are using WordPress all across the world and there are developers who are working very hard day and night every day to create more themes for you, 
more plugins, more short codes. So there's always a community that's kind of working for this. And because of that, there's huge support. So if you have a question about something, it's really easy to find uh, WordPress help and support all across the web. So that's a good thing. And then there's lots of out of its box solutions. WordPress is responsive. Uh, so what that means is that the site will scale to whatever device you're using it on. So when you look at a website on your desktop, that's a different viewing experience than when you look at it on your phone. And you wanna make sure that that site can kind of scale down and be viewable on whatever device you're looking at it on. So whether it's your tablet or your phone or your desktop or a really huge screen, that site needs to be able to stretch and to be able to move in a way where it, it kind of uh, adapts to whatever device it's on. So that's pretty important nowadays. And then SEO, search engine optimization. So you want people to be able to find your website, you want to be able to track certain metrics of who's clicking what, what pages are getting the most traffic and where and stuff like that. So WordPress does a really good job of having some inherent uh, benefits, SEO things already built into some themes, but also you can find a lot of plugins that will do that for you as well. Now, some of the issues, nothing's perfect. So we have to think about these things too. Now, Web WordPress has a heavy code base. What I mean by that is we talked about how, you know, websites are made up of all these files of code. And so the way WordPress is made with PHP, that's the code they use. Uh, there, it is comprised of a lot of different files uh, to make up that platform that will help you do that drag and drop thing and all that kind of stuff. And so sometimes uh, you might download a theme that's like really complicated, but you really only need like a couple pages or not really that much functionality. And so it could be a little bit heavier than you need it to be and it could uh, impact speed, site speed or load time, just depending on how heavy um, like that, that theme is. Um, so that's what I mean by heavy code base. It's just a lot of files and the more files you have, uh, the more heavier or bigger that file size is. And file size obviously impacts how fast something can load onto a screen. Then we want to talk about updates. Well, WordPress needs to be updated. They've got security updates, they've got security patches, they've got new functionality. Uh, just like if you're using like a, something like Adobe Suite, you know, they update Adobe uh, Photoshop and InDesign all the time so that you can have the newest features. WordPress is the same way. They want you to be able to update it so that you can take advantage of all the benefits that they have. But uh, if you forget to update your WordPress or you buy a theme that was made in say 2010, but now we're in 2020, well, maybe that theme is not compatible with how WordPress is updated now. Maybe those things that they, the, the person that coded that made, created that theme, they didn't make it in a way that is compatible with what we have today. So you have to really kind of make sure that number one, your WordPress is updated. And number two, that the themes and that the plugins that you also buy or get also are updated as well. And sometimes they can kind of fluctuate. Uh, you have a little bit of wiggle room as far as like, uh, if you bought something last year, it probably still is gonna work this year. Uh, but it can get a little tricky sometimes because sometimes you have so many different themes, so many plugins that you bought, and sometimes these things kind of can, can conflict together if you're not careful about that. And Keytopia says, is there a tool that automatically resizes your picture quality for fast loading? Yeah, there are many tools like that. And actually inside of WordPress, uh, you can also kind of uh, compress your, your uh, photos down as well inside WordPress. So you, if you started with a really huge image, it can compress it down to a medium size or a small size or a thumbnail size. So it's got that functionality in it as well, which makes it really cool. So thank you for asking that. So the third thing for potential issues is vulnerability, meaning the security of it. So because remember, WordPress is being created by all these different developers, it's open source, so anybody has access to the code to, to build these things, sometimes you can, have some security risks. Uh, there's lots of people out there who just don't have anything else to do, so they're trying to hack, they're trying to uh, get into your site, and so you just have to kind of be careful with that and make sure that you kind of put certain things in place so that you can try to avoid some of these issues, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And then customization. Again, inherently WordPress is pretty easy compared to like building something from scratch, but the more customized you want your site, the more knowledge you will need to have about websites. I kind of make the analogy of WordPress with like those uh, 
those meal kits that you get in the mail, the subscription meal kits like HelloFresh or, or Blue Kits or Blue Apron or something like that, uh, you can get them and you don't have to really know how to cook to use these meal kits because they basically give you all the ingredients. They, they portion it out for you. They give you the recipe. All you have to do is put it together. And that's how I kind of think of WordPress. But if you wanted to get fancy, if you wanted to add some extra stuff, if you want to do something a little different, well, then you might have to have a little bit of some cooking knowledge. And if you wanted to really go off the bar and just do something totally different with that kind of base recipe, then you've got to know what you're doing. So the more that you're trying to customize, the more that you're going to need to understand WordPress or get someone to help you or have someone do it for you that understands WordPress, the farther that you want to customize. Make sense? All right, thank you, Vicki. Cool. So let's talk a little bit, thank you, Marquita and Anita. Thank you for that. So let's talk a little bit more about vulnerability really quick, just so that we know, so that we can feel safe about our, web, our website. So there's a couple things that we can do to kind of increase our security on our website. Really simple things for the most part. Number one, you wanna have a strong password. That just goes for anything on the internet, whether it's your Facebook or your, your email, whatever it is, you wanna have a good strong password. Um, so usually like, you know, uh, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, something like that, so that it's unique to you and that uh, you can uh, remember that you can use in your website. We also want to have SSL certificate. And that's, this is something that extra that we can buy in our web hosting, uh, wherever we actually, where that website actually lives. And basically it enables us to kind of encrypt the connection. So if someone's typing in a credit card number or something like that, um, it'll encrypt that information so that it won't be uh, seen and known to any hackers. They won't be able to know what numbers you're typing in, uh, but that information will still go through. So if you ever see a website where it's like HTTPS, that S stands for secure, and that means that they have a SSL certificate installed on their server. And we're gonna get to that. That's a good question, Rochelle. What are some good hosting platforms? We'll get there in one second. Um, so then security plugins. We actually can uh, buy or find some security plugins uh, that come with WordPress to add extra security. So just depending on the level of complexity of what you wanna do, you can search those and you can find certain things that will help make your site a little bit more secure. And then to Rochelle's question, you definitely wanna have good hosting. And remember, hosting is basically where the server lives, those big supercomputers that hold all the information. And so there's lots of different uh, platforms out there uh, nationwide and worldwide that have these computers that hold your information. So you just need to do a good search. You guys have probably heard of different ones. There's you know, GoDaddy, there's Bluehost, there's HostGator, uh, there's Amazon Web Services, and there's uh, Google Cloud Platform. I mean, there's so many different ones. So you just need to do your research to figure out which one works for you because uh, they all have different costs. Some of them are as low as like, a dollar ninety nine a month. Some of them are a little bit more expensive. It just really depends on what you need to do. And cheaper doesn't necessarily mean worse, because uh, sometimes you don't really need much. Maybe you just need your domain name, which is your URL, and then your hosting, because maybe you're not going to do a really uh, complex website, and that's enough. But maybe if you want to do a little bit more, if you're trying to build like a gaming platform or something really serious, then maybe you're going to need like Amazon Web Services. Um, so you just have to do your research. I would just say. Uh, you know, if it's like, you know, hacker, hacker hosting, and it's like on a foreign looking website and the price is like 43 cents a month, you know, you may not want to use that one. Like just kind of use your own common sense to know uh, what, you, what you should go with. But most of them are pretty good. And Sun is asking, can you talk a bit about WordPress hosting .org versus .com? I think Sun must have seen my presentation already because that's literally the next slide. So we're gonna get right to that in a second. Cool, thank you, Sun. And then we wanna limit our login attempts. So basically that means, so basically for WordPress, you do need to log into the back end to make the changes to your website. Um, but to kind of limit the potential of someone trying to come in and hack your site uh, and keep trying and trying over again to get in there, maybe just limit your login attempts to like, three or four times. Hopefully you have your website login written down somewhere so you can remember that. That kind of helps a little bit. 
And then finally, another thing you can do is just have some form security. So basically, if you have a form on your website, like a contact form where you want someone to put in their name or their email address or their phone number, whatever information you want them to put in, this is another area where it can be compromised, where a bot or some type of hacker can come in and try to put some type of crazy information into your form. Well, we can do some things like, I'm sure you guys have seen forms where it, verify, it says verify you're a human by checking the box, or they'll give you some kind of cool little puzzle where they say, uh, which one of these pictures is a picture of a plane, airplane, you pick the ones, that kind of verifies that you're a human. Sometimes it's like a little uh, code you type in that kind of can verify that you're a human. But it's anything really that can kind of, you have to do as a human being that a, a, a robot couldn't do that would verify that you're a human being. So these are just some few security things. I'm sure there's a lot more deeper things that you can do, but if you do one or a few of these things, you're for sure will, will be, you should be okay. Now, going to Sun's question. Yes, there actually is a difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. It's kind of like two WordPresses. They actually, they both have the same platform and technology, but one has a little bit different capability than the other. So WordPress.com, uh, this is where the hosting is actually already provided for you. So you don't have to pay for any hosting. Uh, WordPress.org, you actually have to buy your own hosting. So you have to host your website uh, through a server, some, some company, GoDaddy, uh, Google Cloud, whatever it is, uh, on your own. Now, both of them use the WordPress platform. So on WordPress.com, you don't have to worry about it. You can kind of just start out of the box. With WordPress.org, they're going to give you the WordPress files and a zip file, and you're going to download it, and you're going to upload it to your own hosting site uh, and use it that way. But they both look the same uh, or similar once you get, get them started. Now, on WordPress.com, if you start from there, uh, you are, you are going to have a subdomain of WordPress.com in your URL. So, for example, if I wanted ChanelWheeler.com, well, on WordPress.com, if I get it from there, it's going to be ChanelWheeler.wordpress.com. So it's not going to be, it's going to be kind of custom, but not really as custom as it could be um, without that subdomain. On WordPress.com, you can start for free, so you don't have to pay anything. Uh, it's pretty easy for a beginner to start there. Uh, they do have a limited number of themes, so you don't have as much uh, leeway, uh, and you can't really install um, any paid themes. Now you, they do have different plans, so if you don't want to, if you want to have more flexibility, uh, you can actually upgrade to the WordPress plans that allow you to have a little bit more flexibility and customization in those areas. Also, with the free plan on WordPress.com, you don't have any access to the plugins which are the add-ons to the site. So you basically have to use those themes that they provide for you as is. Uh, but you can upgrade, like I said, if you want to be able to access those plugins. And then you don't have any access to the backend code or database. So if you wanted to see the actual code of how things are working, if you want to go back there and play with it or do something custom that you couldn't do on the front end with the theme, you aren't able to do that on WordPress.com. And usually when people offer you free things, you don't get the, benefit, the full benefit of the product because you're not paying for it. But if you do pay for it, then you get more access. So WordPress.org, same great WordPress features, but you can go a little bit deeper. The only price is that you have to pay a little bit more to get things started. So like I said, you have to host it on your own site. You can use your own domain. So I can do ChanelWheeler.com, which I actually do own. And I do have a WordPress site for that. Um, and I don't have to have to worry about it saying WordPress.com at the end of my uh, domain. I do have to pay for it, meaning that I don't have to pay for the actual platform, but I have to pay for the hosting. So I have to have host it somewhere and have to pay for my own domain. And then I also requires maybe just a little bit more web design knowledge. If I'm going to do more customization or go a little further, maybe I want to create my own custom theme, then I got to have a little bit more knowledge in that area. Now here I can use any theme that I want. So I can use the ones that come with it. I can use a paid one that I found somewhere on the internet. Uh, I can customize those themes, change the color, change the background, all that kind of stuff. I can do whatever I want. I can also use any plugin, whether it's free or paid for. And yes, I have access to all the code. So if I was like a WordPress guru, which is a coding person, and I wanted to do some things that I couldn't do on the front end, uh, I can go in the back, I can pull up that scary code and I can 
go back there and change some stuff. So those are the primary differences between when you go to WordPress.com and start your WordPress site versus going to WordPress.org and starting a WordPress site. Does that answer your question, son? Let me know if that makes sense to you guys. All right, very, very cool. And so now that we know all that, now we know, thank you, Vicki. Now we know that we can create any type of site that we want. We can do a portfolio site, e-commerce, we can sell our t-shirts, we can do a booking site, finance site, travel, a wedding site, corporate, small business, healthcare, any type of site that you can think of. I'm pretty sure that someone has made a theme a template for this and uh, you can find that. So it's pretty cool. And like I said, you'll find all kinds of different themes out there that you can use. Some are free, some are paid for. Um, it's just up to you to kind of figure out what makes sense for what you're trying to do, how complex or how simple do you need to go. And do you have enough content to actually fill up this website? Because if you don't, it will be kind of salty. Because you'll be like, well, why doesn't my website look like this theme? Well, it's because you don't have as much information to put into your website. Unless you want to just use the, uh, the dummy text that's there, but then that would be not the best thing for you because I don't think you would look as credible having someone else's information in your website. So you just got to think about those things. Um, and that just requires some, a little bit of planning. And for what we're going to do today, we're actually going to use WordPress.com because I want you guys to be able to use, uh, go through this experience and not have to pay for anything, but actually be, still be able to learn WordPress. So we're gonna use WordPress.com to build our first website. Or if you've done this before, your second or third website. So that's what we're gonna do, start today. So what do we need to start the site? Well, number one, we need to choose a website host. Now, because we're using WordPress.com, we don't have that issue because we're gonna, they're gonna host it for us. So we've got that taken care of. We need to pick a domain name. So uh, WordPress.com does let you pick your own dom domain name, but it is gonna have uh, WordPress.com attached to that domain. So just remember that. But you can customize it to a certain degree. And then you're just gonna install it and set it up uh, as your WordPress account using your email. So those are the three main sites that we're going to start with today and then next week we're gonna get deeper into it into actually how to use it. So hopefully that's exciting because I'm excited about it. Does that sound good to you guys? Heck yeah, all right, Kevin, that's what I'm talking about. But first, if any of you guys know me, we gotta take a quiz first because I wanna see if you're paying attention. Now, I mean, usually my quizzes are pretty easy. There's no grade, so. There's no pass or fail, but just want to see if you remembered any things that we talked about. So easy quiz. Just go ahead and tap, type your answer into the chat and we'll see if you were paying attention. All right. First question. What primary code base is used to build WordPress sites? A, B, C, or D? Type it in the chat for me. Oh, you guys are typing fast. Lightning fingers. All right. Excuse me. All right. There we go. That was too easy. Moving on then. What does CMS stand for? All right, I see someone got tripped up a little bit. But most of you guys are saying D, which is correct. I made it, I was being a little tricky with this one. Uh, it is content management system. And it actually does also stand for Center for Medicaid Services, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about WordPress. So yes, D is the answer. All right, and last question of the day. Which is not, I repeat, not a feature of using WordPress.com? Which is not a feature of using WordPress.com? All right, you guys are too smart for me. I can't. I can't do anything else. I can't, I can't trip you up. Absolutely, very good. WordPress.com does not have unlimited features. However, WordPress.org does provide that. See, that was too easy. We got the quiz over with. You guys, guys did an excellent job. Give yourself a round of applause. Very, very good. Always so impressed by you guys. Such fast learners. All right. Well, with that being said, I think we need to get started. 
And we're gonna just do some quick, simple, easy steps to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to wordpress.com. You guys might need to minimize your, um, your Zoom screen just so you can access another window. But go ahead and go to your, word br your uh, web browser, whatever that may be, Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer, and type in wordpress.com in the URL box. And once you're there, which should look like this site here, then just give me a, I'm there in the chat, just so I can make sure that you're there. All right, Kevin's got it, cool. We're gonna make sure everyone's there. Now, I'm gonna say, when we finish this series, we should actually like be a case study or we should be really proud because uh, a lot of people do meetings on Zoom, but I think we're gonna be like Zoom super users because not only are we going to be learning, but we're gonna be doing, and I think that's a pretty big deal. So if we can get, so what I need from you guys is just a lot of confirmation that you're there so that I can know that we've all made it to the same place since I can't see all of your screens. But you guys are doing a great job and it looks like you guys are there. All right. So now that we're here, we're going to click on start your website, the little blue button. So click on that for me. And we should come to this sign up page. Let me know when you're there. We're going to just keep doing this because I just want to confirm that we're all there and ready to go. All right, Kevin's there. And if you don't get there, if you're moving a little slow, if you can't figure it out, no problem, no worries. I'm gonna send out a replay of this class after this is over with a little bit later today. So if you need to go back over anything or if you didn't quite get all the steps, no problem. You can always watch the replay and you can do it on your own. But it'd be a lot easier if we can also just try to get a lot of it done here so that you can have support that you need from the class. All right, now you guys are there. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and use an email address um, a username and a password that you feel comfortable with. Or if you want to, you can go ahead and use an existing Google account or Apple account and just sign in that way. So go ahead and uh, use one of the, one of the uh, methods here, either type in your uh, email address and create a, a username, Oops, let me do this one. Or you can use your Google um, account and do it that way. Let me type in my right email address. And when you've got that done, let me know. Okay. Seem to be forgetting my email today. All right. So I'm gonna create my account. And you guys let me know when you've gotten there. Uh-oh, this one's not available. All right, I'm just gonna take the easy way. I'm gonna use my Google. I wasn't gonna try to cheat, but I'll do that. All right. You guys are there, all right. And you should come to a screen that asks, what kind of a domain name do you want to use? Now, to keep it simple, we're going to make our website about us, ourselves. And you can always uh, change this later. Uh, but we're, for this purpose of this class, we're going to just name our domain our first and last name or whatever you want to call yourself. So I'm going to call mine Chanel W. And if someone else already has this domain name, it's going to tell you. But you've got to first type it in and see if it's available. Um, now remember, we're not paying for anything, so you don't want to select anything that has a paid option. We want to go with um, the free option. And so I'm going to use chanelw.com. And you guys go ahead and figure out what you guys want to use for your domain name. But try to use your name or something like that. That's like really simple. And what you want to do is you don't want to, actually, let me take that back. You actually don't want to use this portion here because right now, uh, it's free, but it is going to renew after a year to be $18 per year. And because we want to keep it free, we're going to go down here to where it says free. 
And as you can see, it's kind of tacked on a couple of numbers behind my name, uh, but that's okay. So Chanel W1409 7983.wordpress.com. Totally fine. We're just doing this for learning purposes. So go ahead and click that one that's free, that doesn't have any type of uh, fee tacked on after a year. Uh, you do have a year to get ready if you did click it on accident, but let's just go with the free one just to make sure. So I'm going to select this one and you guys let me know when you selected your domain as well. And you should come to this kind of screen where they're going to try to upsell you and get you to do some more, but we're not doing that. We're just going to keep it free. So let me know when you get to this site and when you do this page and when you do just click uh, start with a free site instead of any of these plans. We're just going to start with a free site. All right, Vicky's got it. I'm gonna click start with free too. And it should be kind of saying, hooray, your site will be ready shortly. And you should come to the screen once you've done that. So once you're there, just type in home. So I'm just, so I'm very sure that you're there, that you're at the home page that I'm showing right now. Kevin's home, Cheryl's home, Rochelle's there, Vicky. All right, you guys are moving fast. All right. We're gonna make sure everybody's home before we do anything else. And we're just gonna take a few more steps today and then we're going to uh, get ready for next week. If you got any questions or uh, concerns, let me know if we can help you get there. Remember, you don't have to pay for anything. Just click that free option. Don't click on any paid stuff. Don't get caught up, not yet at least. Make sure we're all home, we're all there. All right. See, we've got a few more people. Let's see if you guys make it there. Sun, get Vicky, are you guys, uh, Vicky's there, all right. Marquita, are you there? I'm gonna just wait 15 more seconds and then we'll move on. Just wanna make sure everybody's there. And get says, choose template, all right. That's okay. I think you. I think you're still back there in the back end. So I think we're still good. Marquita's working on it. She's working on it. We're going to go ahead, and we are going to set up our website in a very basic way. So as you can see on the left hand side, there's kind of a pane, a menu here that kind of goes through different menu items that we're going to review more in depth next week. But the first pane says My Home, and if you're not on that uh, menu item, just click on My Home, and it'll be um, highlighted. And it should tell you that your website has been created and you want to get started. So you can either click the get started button or you can click on where it says name your site, but we're just going to name our website. So click on name your site and it should bring you to this type of page here where we want to say what the site title is. So what is the name of your website? Now to keep it simple, we're just going to use our name that we use in our domain. So I'm just going to use Chanel W. You guys type in your name for your website name. Now, if you want, you can add a tagline. Is it necessary? Eh, not really. You can if you want to, um, but I'll just say my tagline is this is my awesome. This is my awesome new website. So we should have our site title, which is our name. And if you want to add a tagline, that's up to you. Totally not necessary, but if you just want to do it, that's cool. We can also choose a site icon, um, which will basically um, show up at the top of our site, but we're going to bypass that for right now. We're going to do that a little bit later. We're just going to keep it really simple today. And once you're done that, you're going to click on this little pink button at the top here that says save settings. It's very important to always click save if you want your changes to be uh, applied. So go ahead and click save settings for me. And it should give you a confirmation that says good job once you do that. And you can return to home once you have finished doing that. When you're back to home and you've done your site name and title, click on home, type home in the chat to let me know that you're there. You guys are doing great. 
This is good. This is good. We're going to be Zoom super users. I, I, can, I can already see it because we're doing good. We're talking to each other. We're confirming. Very good. And guess what? This is all we're going to do for today as far as setup. The other thing that I need you to do also is it may ask you to verify your email address. Now, if you actually uh, used your Google account to sign up with this, then your email address is probably already confirmed. But if you didn't, just go ahead and check your email, uh, just in case whatever email you use to sign up with, just to make sure that you're confirmed so that WordPress knows that you're using a, a legit uh, email address. So usually on the side here, um, it'll say confirm your email address and it says, please click the link to, that we sent to Chanel at gmail.com to confirm your email. So just go ahead and check your email to make sure that you have a confirmation link and confirm that uh, at your own convenience. So basically we've got our website set up where we've got the start of it, um, but we're gonna get a lot deeper into this uh, next week. So I just wanna show you guys um, what those steps are. And remember, before our class next week, it's really important that you go ahead and finish your WordPress setup. So everything that we just did just now, uh, just make sure you go ahead and finish that if you weren't able to. Uh, make sure you, you sign in with the email, that you type in your site name and your, uh, your tagline if you want to. Um, go ahead and make sure you choose your domain name. So it should have been your name, with probably a whole bunch of numbers behind it, that wordpress.com. And then you wanna go ahead and verify your email. Um, just check your email and see if you got a link. It may have gone to your spam box, so check there too. But just go ahead and verify your email and click on that link when you get it. And that way, we'll know that your WordPress website is set up. So you guys did an awesome job. And for next week, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get deeper into that back end. We're gonna learn the anatomy of the different menu areas that we need to access in order to start um, creating our website. And again, like I said, our website is gonna be about us. So the kind of example that I showed you, let me go back and find that slide all the way in the beginning. We're gonna have uh, some images of ourself. Uh, if you don't want these images of yourself, you can find some sock photography if you wanna be somebody else. Uh, and we're going to uh, create a really simple website with probably about three main pages. We're gonna have the home page, the blog page, and the contact page. But we're gonna plan this out. So just think, just keep in your mind, just start thinking about what images you wanna to use to represent yourself, maybe what you wanna talk about. We don't have to use a whole bunch of content or have a lot of paragraphs written up for this website. We can use some of the dummy text that they already have here. But we want it to look like our own. We want it to look unique to us. So just keep that in mind uh, for the next two classes. So for that, for next week, we're going to need to make sure that we complete our uh, registration on website on WordPress, but also we're going to learn the anatomy of the back end. We're going to learn how to create a page. We're going to learn how to create a post, which are two different things. And then we're going to map out our custom website so that we can build it out in the last class. We can work together to make it look really cool. And you will be able to say that you built your own WordPress website. How's that sound? Sound good? All right, and like I said, if you kind of start today, then you skip next week, then the third one's gonna be a little difficult because you're gonna have missed some steps. Although I will send some resources in between the classes to help you uh, kind of remember what we're working on. So you will have some resources to kind of reference to these things, but if you attend all three, it'll be much easier. Before I share my last slide with you, does anyone have any questions for me? Does this make sense? Does anybody feel intimidated, nervous, excited? What are you guys feeling? Makes sense. Somebody's, okay, bring it on. All right, Kevin, I hear you. Let's go. I feel it. Let's get it. Very good. Very cool. Well, I just want to let you guys know some upcoming awesomeness. Rochelle feels good. I feel good, too. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have our next two WordPress classes uh, next week and the following weekend. So we're just going to keep it moving so we can keep that momentum going. Another cool uh, initiative that I want to tell you guys about is Portfolio Days. It's actually October 16th through 17th. If you or anyone you know 
has a website or graphic design portfolio that they want reviewed. We're actually going to be doing that in a two day event and it's totally free complimentary. So if you need to have a portfolio for say trying to get a job or for school or for freelance or, you know, trying to land a big client or whatever it is. Uh, but you want to make sure that your portfolio is on point because in this visual design world, your portfolio is king. Uh, if any of you guys read my email that I sent out earlier this week, and the portfolio is what showcases your work. So if you're not sure if your portfolio is up to par, please sign up for the portfolio days and we will review your portfolio absolutely free. And then I'm really, really excited. Stay tuned because we're going to do a whole design software series. It's going to be three separate classes, three separate series, but we're going to learn Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator. InDesign is for page layout, uh, Photoshop is for photo editing, and Illustrator is for uh, vector illustration. So if you're interested in learning these programs and trying to apply it to your work, your personal life, your job, your business, whatever that is, Git says yes, I'm saying yes too, then you gotta sign up for this series. So I will have more details for you that, details for you on that a little bit later. So stay tuned for that. But if you wanna learn that software, uh, some of the most powerful software in the world that professionals use to make magazines, do stuff for TV, all that kind of stuff, this is the industry standard, then you wanna definitely sign up for the design software series. Again, if you have any questions, feel free at any time to email me at chanel at awesomedesign.academy, not .com, but that .academy. And please go ahead and follow me on uh, Awesome Design Academy on IG because uh, you can get some cool updates there, get some cool tips, and kind of stay updated to what we're doing. So if anyone doesn't have any questions, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I totally enjoyed being here with you today. I hope that you learned something new, something fun. Look out for that email because I'm going to send a follow-up email later today that goes over all what we talked about today and how to prepare for the next class. And I will see you next Saturday. Thank you guys. Really great seeing you. Take care.